Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, uh, this book that we are about to talk about is an autobiography by Nomako Sazana Mbogotwana's journey of how at only 30 years old, she's starting to feel like her life is only just beginning after surviving the hardship of trying to deal with childhood trauma, the loss of her entire family. Um, Nomako Sazana Mbogotwana is in the studio with us this morning to shed more light on her story as she shares uh, it in this offering. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so how much. How are you Shadow. doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Uh, talk to us about the inspiration behind this book, A Heart Stretched by Grief and Gratitude. First of all, just the title Jay, just grabs me. Tell us a little bit about how you came up with the title. Well, I'm sure you've heard many people say you can never judge a book by its cover. Mm. Well, mine you can do. Okay. <laughs> you can definitely judge mine by its cover and its title. Uh, so what inspired the book uh, is basically uh, two things. It was uh, childhood trauma, uh -huh. hopelessness and depression. Hence why the title, A Heart Stretched by Grief and Gratitude. Why the decision to write about it? What is it that propelled you to say, okay, I need to put this into a book form? Okay. Um, I have never really dealt with the trauma, the depression and everything that I went through when I was growing up and when I lost my parents. Because... Um, Back then, I couldn't afford uh, to get professional help uh, to go for counselling and everything. And I would get along a lot of young people asking me, how do I do it? How are you so strong? I wouldn't be able to leave without my parents. I wouldn't be able to go on, um, you know. So I thought maybe this would help to reach out to a lot of people out there that you can actually do it. Um, as difficult as it is, but you can soldier on. So yes, this is why that is why I decided to, to write the book, and also it was for my own healing, um, because I had to unmask um, a lot of things that I had concealed in the past in the book. So yeah, yeah, that's why I decided to write it. And I mean, talk to us about some of the touching aspects of you know losing your entire family and your childhood trauma. Are you at liberty to tell us a bit what those entailed? Yes. Um, well, um, I introduce you guys to uh, a child that was born by a domestic worker mm. and was kept at her employer's place secretly mm. because uh, children are not allowed at her workplace. And then she was shipped off to the Eastern Cape at the age of five to start school there because her mother couldn't afford to school her in the city. So she dealt with a lot of separation anxiety um, she masked a lot of feelings during this hair stay uh, in the Eastern Cape and she went through a lot without the parents and she realized that she was different because everyone else around her uh, had both parents and yet she didn't have. Um, yeah. um, and then death kept visiting. Um, uh, firstly, my brother, Tamagwini, and then it was my dad and I couldn't even attend my dad's funeral because I was down at the Eastern Cape. Yeah. Um, I for only found out six months later that he had passed on and my mother was not sure how she's going to break the news to me because I was on, always considered as the most sensitive child mm. uh, that I wouldn't be able to handle the news and so on. So how I found out was her telling um, my aunt that she doesn't know how she's going to break the news to me. And I just walked in and told them, you do not have to worry about that because I already know. Mm. And then my second brother and her so yeah and it's a lot though at that time how old are you at that time when all this is happening when you lose your two of your brothers and then your dad how old are you at that time um i think i was 11 when i lost my first my first brother uh, my dad i was about 13 years uh Uluazi, i was 19, 20, mm. and then my mom was, I was 23 years old. And for one person to deal with so much loss and all in short, such a short space of time, how do you then deal with something so heavy at that age? Because I mean, at 20, you're not a complete adult as yet. Yes. Do you know what I mean? There's some part of you that is still actually just growing. Yes, actually, uh, I've never had even a uh, a child, a, a carefree mm. life. Mm. I've never really been a child. I don't know how it feels to be a carefree child because I've always been, uh, had to be responsible. Since I was kept in my mother's uh, employer's house secretly, I always had to have my curtains closed. 
I ha always had to make sure that I don't play the TV too loud. I always made sure that I don't step outside in case the dogs uh, see me. So, uh, uh, and then my parents died when I was still young, so I had to rebuild my home back in the Eastern Cape so I can have something to, that I can go back to. Mm. I had to take care of myself uh, in Durban. I had to do everything for, and it, it, it was quite hard. I don't want to lie, because when my mother, my mother died, I was still an intern. I couldn't provide for myself, like, basic needs. So it was hard, but I had to soldier on and keep going because giving up was not an option. What do you think kept you going? Faith. Mm. Faith. I knew that I was not destined for, to suffer forever mm. and that everything that had happened happened for a reason. Uh, that maybe there is somebody who is watching out there that is looking at me and getting inspired to soldier on that may be hopeless and feeling broken like I was. And um, I was thinking that maybe I'm being sent to, for a special purpose, you know, to assist somebody else who's out there. And so I decided to, to put it in a book because the book will reach people I may not be able to reach, mm. you know, so mm. yeah. You also had suicidal thoughts as well. Talk to us about yes. how you dealt with that. Oh, man, dealing with uh, loss uh, is difficult, um, especially if you have underli under underlying issues uh, that you, you, you have never dealt with exactly. So um, what happens is when you're depressed or when you're dealing with emotional pain, it becomes physical also. Mm. Um, you start developing things like headaches. Um, you, you, you lose weight. You, 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 your immune system becomes very weak. You always, you, you feel fatigued. There's a lot of things that happen to your body that make you feel like you can no longer take it anymore, that you can no longer wake up and you pray for a break, you know. So when that break doesn't come or it doesn't come soon enough, you start thinking of ways of how you can just Re release yourself from all of this bad and from all of this pain. So it was no longer just about emotional pain. Emotional pain. It also got physical, and that is when I started feeling like I could just die. Mm. But I didn't have the guts to just do it. Talk to us about the healing process and how this book played a role in your healing process. Uh, the healing process, well, I, I started speaking to other people since I couldn't afford to take myself to counseling and mm. so on. So I just started randomly writing posts on Facebook um, to heal myself and to let it all out. And uh, I started having cell groups with other young ladies that have been through traumatic uh, experiences in the past. And I've had the, this thing, I'm not sure what it is, that draws people to me. Mm. Uh, they feel comfortable to speak to me. Even people that I have never met, they would inbox me and tell me uh, what they're going through, how difficult it is. And I would just assist them, you know, try to speak them, speak to them and give them hope and so on. So uh, that is why I just, you know, I'd, let me just take this seriously and put it in a book and see how that will go. You know, there's a phrase that you use in the book, there's no formula to life. Absolutely. Why is that? Why do you use that phrase? Why is that so close to your heart? It is because um, my life, as I had imagined it, or how the, uh, how the society views life, that mm. these are the stages. You know, there's a formula that, okay, uh, you, they, you, you, you go on to your teenage life and adulthood. Mm. This is what is expected to happen. But I never had that. I mean, my life started from the end. I felt like it, 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 it started from revelations and it's going towards Genesis because I'm only starting to feel like that now my life is starting at the age of 30 mm. because I've never had the peace that I have now. I've ne had never had the power that I feel like I have now. I've never ha had the freedom that I think I, f I have now. Yeah. So that's why I, I say there is no formula to life. Never feel pressured and never think that when things are not happening the way that mm. you think they, you, they were supposed to happen, there is something wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So. All right, Numa Kosazana, thank you so much. Uh, good luck with the book. It really is an inspiration. Uh, Numa Kosazana Mbokotoana speaking to us about her book, uh, Heart Stretched by Grief and Gratitude. And she's our author for today.